In this tutorial, I'm going to talk a little bit about file management. We've set up our file management and have saved things to the following location. So we've saved it to our projects drive in a folder called projects. And then we named a folder inside there after our project site. And then we had a folder in there called GIS. Then we had another folder called source. And then inside source, we created several folders named after the source of where our data came from. And if I just open County and Riley, we can see that we have all of our GIS source data, which we've also added to our data frame and examined in our previous step. It's always good practice to have a strong file management system to prevent mix-up of project assets from occurring across different projects. And as you can see here, ArcGIS creates for just this one file here, this B60K150. There's several little companion files that go with that one single file. So when you do file management, you don't want to drag and drop just one of these because you're not going to be able to use this file with just one. You need all of these companion files in order for this GIS file to work. The other thing that we need to talk about is ArcGIS 10 and on, and we're using 10.1 for this demonstration, prefers its data to be placed into a geo database. A geo database is a geospatial data storage framework for ArcGIS designed to centralize spatial data and its management. So a geo database is simply a container holding all of our geospatial data, and that's how we're going to use it for this demonstration. In later demonstrations, we'll do a lot more with the geo database, but for now, we're just going to keep it really simple. So raster data will be entered into the geo database as raster data sets and shape files and these are shape files here they end with the .shp file extension when they go into the geo database they'll be called feature classes so what we're going to do is we're going to create a geo database there are several ways to create a geo database and we'll explore these different rate these different ways throughout the tutorial so I don't want you to be confused if I do the same thing a different way. I just want to make sure that you know that there are different ways of doing the exact same task. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Start and go to All Programs and go to my ArcGIS and go to the Arc Catalog 10.1. And the Arc Catalog is pretty much the same thing as the Windows Explorer for Windows. But this art catalog is for managing GIS files. Remember the separate little files that we saw for a shape file? Well, this art catalog will make sure that when we move a shape file, that all the companion files will go with it. So over here, where it says Folder Connections, I'm going to expand that. And right now, I only see my E drive in here, and I really need my D drive to be in here, because that's where my GIS data is at. So you may have the same situation, so what I'll need to do is create a folder connection. So what I can do is I can right click on this folder connection and select connect to folder. And then here it says connect a folder. I can go to computer, select my D drive. I want it to connect to my D drive and then just click OK. And now D drive shows up as an option here under folder connections. And in this middle panel area, all of the contents of my D drive appear here. So I need to navigate to Projects, and I need to navigate to Marlet Park, and I need to go to the GIS folder, and I'm going to create my Geo Database in this Geo Database folder. Notice that we have three other tabs here, which allows us to preview the data that we select, and we can also preview any metadata or description information that's associated with that data. I'm going to right click over here where it says contents and I'm going to go to new and I'm going to choose file geo database. Notice that we have two options here. We have personal geo database and file geo database. The file geo database will allow us to create geo databases that are greater than 2 gigabytes in size. The personal geo database has a 2 gigabyte size limit. So of course our data altogether may exceed 2 gigabytes. So we're going to want to choose the file geo database. And once we do that, we get the option to name our geo database. 
And I'm going to name it after our project site. The one thing I do want to mention about ArcGIS, and I don't know if this is documented anywhere, that it is very, very particular about its naming. Usually it doesn't like names to begin with numbers. You have to begin with some kind of letter, and it can be upper or lower case. So we're going to name this after our project site, actually. And it usually has an eight character limitation. The name of the geo database is usually not too particular. I find that if you go beyond 15 characters, it gets very, very particular. So in this case, we're under 15 characters, but some of the files that you may need to have to place into the geo database in order, in order for it to work with other tools, you'll need it to be under eight characters long. It also doesn't like spaces, and it'll either take dashes or underscores. I usually don't add those in just to minimize future potential problems. So it wants to be eight characters long, alphanumeric, and it doesn't want to start with a number and no special characters. Just have to remember that. And spaces count as a special character. So what we've done thus far, so if we go over here on the left side, expand this and click on my Marlet Park GDB, we have created a container that will allow us to put our GIS data into. So we can basically see this as a container where we can place our GIS files.